Hey guys, you've got Peter Charles here from Brisbane Town Planning. Now, if you saw the first video that I recorded, you would know that in this video series, we're going to focus on some of the biggest town planning constraints. More importantly, though, we're going to look at why it makes smart business sense for you guys as building designers to know about this stuff, and more importantly, to care about this stuff. So in today's video, we're going to start by focusing on zoning. Let's start by talking about what zoning is in the first instance. Well, believe it or not, council has very, very clear intentions and expectations about what they want to see on each and every side across the city. Expectations are intentions in terms of the use. Expectations and intentions in terms of the height, etc, etc. You get the idea. (laughs) Now, I like to think of the zoning maps as kind of like a visual representation of those expectations. So it clearly maps out what council wants to see where they want to see it. Now, why should you care about this thing? Why does it impact on you? Well, I'd probably suggest there's two key things or two key reasons or what am I trying to say here? Let's just go with reasons. (laughs) Two reasons that it can impact on you. Number one, you want to make sure that the use that you're actually designing, the use that you're proposing can actually be built on that property. First example I'll give you is pretty obvious. If someone comes to you and they say they want you to build units or want you to design units for their property, you want to make sure that you can actually build units on that property pretty straightforward, right? I mean, let's use Brisbane as an example. If you've got a property and it's in the character residential one zone, yeah, nah, not going to happen. That's like house city, not unit city. There aren't any units going up there, guys. But on the other hand, if you come to me with like an LMR, low to medium density residential zone property, okay, yes, that's unit city. Now we're talking, now we're cooking. (laughs) So that's one sort of aspect or example. Let's look at another example, the opposite side of the spectrum. We've actually had this come up quite a few times already this year, which is a bit surprising. We've had people come to us and say, okay, I want to bulldoze that house, I want to build my dream house, oh, I'm envisaging it already, it's going to be beautiful. I then look at the property and I come back to them and go, Yeah, do you realize your property's in the medium density residential zone? Council wants to see like eight stories on those properties. And the people look at me and go, we're we're in house city. Like there's houses, there ain't no high rises around here. What on earth are you talking about? I then need to have the painful conversation with them to sit there and say, yeah, so council has these expected densities and population growth rates. They've worked out where those people are gonna go across the city. They've worked out that they're going to get like 20 or 30 dwellings on your property. Yeah, if you want to lodge one application for one little house, nah, not going to fly. They're just going to underbake or undercook their site. Then they're going to have to go around and try and find another site to put those other 29 houses on. Yeah, they're not going to be happy. Yeah, now it's not going to happen. (laughs) Those people again look at me and go, you do realize we're in house city. And I'm like, yeah, I realize you're in house city, but that ain't going to be there for long. (laughs) It's not a fun conversation to have with people. So yes, you want to make sure that whatever you're designing can actually be built at the end of the day. Now, I know some of you are going to sit there and say, that's not my problem. They asked me to design a house. I design a house. Why should I care? Well, as I mentioned in the first video, it makes smart business sense to actually see your project through to construction, to see the positive outcome at the end. Because if that project falls down before it even gets to construction, those people are going to bitch and moan about the whole process to anyone and everyone that's going to listen. And unfortunately, you're going to get dragged down in the mud with them. So it's in your interest, because at the end of the day, let's be real, most of our businesses are based on word of mouth referrals. So it's in your interest to ensure that there's positive vibes at the end there, so that they go and spread the love and talk about you to everyone in a good way. Okay, so that's the first reason you want to care about this stuff. Second reason, let me use an example here. This comes up actually quite frequently. Again, we'll focus on Brisbane as our example. People come to me and they go, okay, so I'm going to do my dream renovation here. I'm going to pump like $600,000, dollars hey, even $800,000 into this. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Everyone's going to talk about it for years to come. I look at it and go, yeah, do you realize that that's low to medium density residential? Do you realize that council intends for two-story or three-story units to be in that area, like to pop up next door? Do you really want to do a dream renovation, pump all of that money into that property, knowing that that could happen next door? I mean, the second the builder leaves your property, you could start construction right next door for some units, looking straight into your backyard. Yeah, do you really want that? I mean, what's that going to do to the value of your property? Can we say (laughs) overcapitalization? It's not pretty. Now, sometimes people will surprise you. Won't they surprise me? I had a job recently at West End. Now, I turned around to that lady and said, hey, do you realize that the zoning across the road actually allows for 15-story high-rise? Do you really want to build your dream house across the road from that? She turned around and she went, yeah, I do. 
And I went, excuse me, you do? I don't understand that. You're going to pump a bucket load of money into a house that's going to be overtowered and overpowered. Overtowered, overpowered, you get what I'm trying to say. Overpowered by this unit complex across the road. And she's like, yep. And I'm like, okay, well, at least can you please design it for it to account for that fact? <laughs> like, please don't go putting your pool in the front yard so that all the units can look down on them. Put the pool in the backyard. So yes, if they're not going to move, if people decide, hey, that's the place that they do want to stay, and sometimes they'll sit there and say, we know Bob next door, we know Sue next door, they're not going anywhere for 50 years. And I can go, okay, cool, if you want to bank on that, that's sweet. But please at least design to account for the fact that it could change in the future. So don't put all your private open space right next to where all their parking is going to go, all of that sort of stuff. So yes, do they actually want to stay there? If they do, does the design need to be amended to account for that fact? And again, I go back to the point I was making before, it makes smart business sense for you guys to consider this stuff in the first instance, because then it actually leads to those good vibes in the long term, which means more referrals, which means more money in the bank account. I mean, who doesn't want money in the bank account, right? <laughs> okay, I think that covers off everything I wanted to talk about today. As I always say, until next time, thanks for watching. For all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well. No, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.